Good afternoon. This is Dr. Bill White with the American Orthodontic Society, and I want to talk to you this afternoon about deep bites and why we have so many of these people who have uh, such deep bites you can't even see their lower anterior teeth. And you have to go in and open these bites up to get it to where they can actually chew properly. In other words, they bite from side to side that way. Now, a lot of them come up with crowding the lower anterior teeth by the upper teeth being covered over them, uh, something like that, and the jaw can't come out here where it wants to. And then how did this how did this get here to start with? And so I've been thinking about that for a long time why we have so many of these deep bites like this that don't let the jaw come out. Now, some people it doesn't bother them, but other people, they wear their, the backside of the upper teeth out and wear the fronts of the lower teeth off trying to get their jaw out in front of this. And they may have the temporal mandibular joint problem that is really giving them trouble. And so, I, I, I feel like uh, there's some definite reason for this to happen. And I'm pretty sure it's the way the poor primitive people ate their food. They grind the corn between two rocks and there'll be a lot of the rock grinding in the corn meal that they eat. And so the teeth you have to chew this stuff and wear the teeth down. I know people that chew tobacco a lot. Though they don't realize it sometimes, the dust collects in a little fine hair on the tobacco leaf. And the tobacco leaf has an abrasive ability to it. And people will wear their teeth down chewing tobacco even. Now, if you chew just on the back teeth, it wears them, but not the front teeth. Uh, but if you bite with your front teeth and use them very much, they never develop and go down like this. So I looked at some people as they're developing and there's a little shortness of the lower jaw, and especially on men, and then as they get older, they get an outgrowth of this, and that pushes the jaw into the back of the upper front teeth, and when they chew then, it pushes the mandible back into the retrodiscal tissue and they'll have TMJ problems. Now, some people have a lot of space in there and it doesn't bother them, but others it does. I can't imagine any Eskimo women who chew the hides of animals, you know, to soften this up. And then American Indian people did that uh, too. And then they ate things that were just gritty and uh, all sorts of uh, things. Uh, I've uh, looked into this uh, group of people that had uh, died in a battle out in the, the Fort Concho area. And they preserved their skulls of these men and none of them had cusp on their teeth. Now the Indians got together and decided they didn't like their uh, ancestors' uh, skulls being taken care of like that, so they uh, came in and the government let them take them up and uh, carry them away. But I got to see them before they did that. And honestly, I did not find a single skull looking at through this uh, group of them that had cusp on their teeth even though this battle had taken place when most of them were about, oh, maybe 18, 19, 20, and uh, maybe 25, something like that. So they were right young people that had the cusp ground off their teeth. So when they slid their jaw forward and uh, they gnawed on things and it wore the upper teeth down. We do not do that today. Um, I've told people how many times I've 
as old as I am, if I had been eating the way the Apaches and the Comanches and the tough uh, Indians in this area were doing, I wouldn't have teeth that be anywhere like this. Now my teeth are long and haven't worn down and I've eaten a lot of stuff and even gnawed the bones on uh, I eat a piece of chicken. I never cut it off. I take the bone and bite the meat off the bone. I eat the ribs, I bite the meat off. Don't cut it off. Use your front teeth out here and get them worn down and you get used to use them and you go ahead and use the front teeth and they'll be uh, shorter and so they can come out here and bite normally well, with that. That's just my own feeling with this. So I'm going to show you a case here that's got a tremendous deep bite. Just, he's not an Indian <laughs> or anything. He's a, a air traffic controller. So, but people have to understand him when he talks. So anyway, uh, this is just my own idea of why there are so many deep bite cases among people today where we eat processed food and we don't have to gnaw the bones and chew the stuff off of the of bone as more primitive did and then we eat food that are more cleaned and uh, taken care of and don't have the amount of sand or grit in them that they do. Now the tobacco chewer does get tobacco that's got fine dust in their little uh, pores or little hairy-like stuff that's on the leaf of the tobacco. And a tobacco chewer will wear their teeth out uh, much earlier than somebody else. So let's take a look at this uh, case that we've got up here. This is a, a nicest guy you ever run into. And he's just a, a really fine fella. I'm going to have to get back over here and, and get uh, my uh, little marking pen ready. And <clears throat> now I'm showing you his teeth after we open the bite. Now this is starting to get a different we're going from the start to the back. But these teeth right here were down here somewhere. And we have put these intruding arches in that come over like that on top of a regular arch. And you bring it down and hook it to these places like this. And this one down here would come down way down here. And you raise it up and hook it to these teeth two or three places. Uh, right along in here, and the, that arch wire will push up on the teeth and down on the lower teeth, and it puts pressure on the molars. It tends to tip the molar, but if you got somebody that chews hard, this molar instead of, like if you took a prize bar and put it in here and pulled it down, it would cock this molar You'd, the motor tooth would be headed kind of like that. Uh, and so it does, but when it did it, or when it does, it hits, it puts these two front cusps together and the chewing keeps the tooth in place. And these teeth will not be displaced hardly any. That's your six year motor that this is tied to. But all of these teeth will be picked up. Now they don't bury the tooth in the bone structure unless you're just pushing one tooth and leave the others alone. You take the whole thing and the bone goes up right with the teeth and the that's the alveolar bone that holds the roots and this will go down with the teeth right here and the clinical crown of the tooth will look virtually the same when you get the bite opened. And now when your bite opens like this, you really want just a little bit of overjet and overbite 
uh, on the teeth to leave them like that. So when I bite a sandwich off, I move my jaw forward and put my teeth together out here. Nothing touches in the sides except when I bite with my front teeth, you'll get pressure on the condyles back in the back. You can put your fingers up there and feel it yourself, you know. And if I slide my jaw forward, you can feel the head of the condyle slide up over the evidence, and that disengages the teeth back here, but lets you bite with your front teeth. These things are, uh, are known by people that uh, mess with the occlusion all the time, but everybody ought to realize that that's what happens. And if I have some problem with my jaw, if I reach out here to bite with my front teeth, the muscle is right close to the jaw back here. The, the, the uh, masseter and uh, temporalis muscle and everything is right close to the, to the, uh, the jaw joint. So when I bite out here in the front of my mouth, and if I bite on these front teeth right out here, and if I put 10 pounds of weight on these teeth right here, and you go back in the back, and the muscle is about four times further away from it back here, or three times, you can feel where your muscle goes if you just bite down and press and where your muscle is, and open your mouth and you can feel what tooth you're over and you can tell where the muscle actually contacts, and that's where you can chew the hardest on anything. But anyway, you do that, and these teeth will, uh, if you bite hard enough and everything and do that, you can intrude these teeth. So we put something in here that will keep this pressure on these teeth when you bite out there, or whether you're not biting, they have a constant pressure on them, and you can level anybody's bite. I don't care if they're my age, you can still level the bite. Then the person can chew properly. They can chew from side to side. You take somebody with a deep bite, if they go to the side, their teeth they can't even get them together at all. So they chew more like a, a dog. You watch a dog chew. They don't chew much at all. You know, they just bite down on it and swallow as quick as they can. Uh, now, a cow or an animal that chews grass and eats grass and everything, they kind of grind the food back and forth, and human beings grind them. It's four times easier to grind your food up than it is if you've got a deep bite and you have to do like this and you can't grind it, so you have to just chop it up. You will swallow it in larger pieces than you would if you chewed it properly. So a pe people should chew their food properly, and they wouldn't have as much problem with stomachs and digestion and all that kind of, kind of stuff. That's not what we're in here today. Now I'm going to erase what we've got here and go to the next uh, slide, and this is the guys in class one, these, these teeth are coming right down in here, and we've got him open further than we'll want. He'll close down real easy, and we'll have these upper front teeth just a little bit over the lower front teeth, so when he bites his sandwich off, uh, he'll cut to it, and these teeth won't touch while well, these are touching. Now the same thing when he chew or say I'm chewing on the left side, your jaw shifts over here. This condyle moves up on the eminence, the top, and the other one over here kind of rotates. And it lets you chew with these teeth and these not hit. And the same thing if you go over there. And these are some things you need to understand, and people straightening teeth need to definitely understand. That's the way you ought to leave the person and have them in retention. When they've got a little overjet, they reach out here and bite, nothing touches but the tips of their condyles fitting up in the socket 
and the front teeth out here allows us to bite a sandwich and going to move the teeth apart. Now, if you've got this deep bite, you've got to open your mouth a, a quarter of an inch or a half inch sometimes with some people to get your teeth out here. you got a big gap in there. And if you're having TMJ problem, and your jaw doesn't hurt out here, but it's done back here, then you have to put a splint in that person's mouth and makes a split where it doesn't hurt, the jaw doesn't hurt back here, but then the splint has to fill in and fill this place where it beats so that when they're biting and they've got this splint, the load goes up through the bone structure. It doesn't go from the condyle to the front teeth. In other words, if you put a splint on somebody and you bite where it's comfortable, the head of the condyle will not put any pressure on the retrodiscal tissue. It will just be clear of it at all. You've got about oh, a couple of millimeters of thickness or a little more sometimes. Uh, and that keeps these teeth apart. If you wear a mouth guard and you play any sport at all, that you could be hit in the mouth, wear a mouth guard. And the other thing made to where when it, you bite together, you've got your teeth just slightly forward and that keeps the teeth apart and you get hit in the jaw, you'll close all this almost automatically. And this load then is distributed over all the teeth and pushes up against the whole thing up here. If you just have your mouth open and you've got a deep bite and somebody hits you in the jaw and nothing comes in contact except your front teeth, it'll break them off. And it, it's, it's gets done a lot. You chip them. So wear a mouth guard, it protects the joint, protects everything in there. Okay, we're going to, I think later on, I'm going to show how you make you a mouth guard uh, uh, splint, actually, out of these uh, football mouth guards, if you want to build them that way. Now we look at this side, and it's open. Now this is just after we have finished opening this gentleman's bite, and we'll go to the other side of the mouth, and you see this is in class one. Now he's got some little tiny laterals, and they didn't fill the gap in here when you had these in the right place, and these are in the right place. These are all in the right place. He's had a tooth extracted, so we had to put something to hold this gap open, and he can have an implant or a bridge or whatever he wants in here. And he didn't have a wisdom tooth back here, or we could have move that tooth up into that place and then had the second motor, which this one is, and the, the wisdom tooth is filled in, but there's no wisdom tooth uh, on him, so we have to depend on somebody putting an implant in here or else you have to bridge this whole thing or you put some kind of partial in there. Uh, now let's get on uh, with uh, what we really came here to show you. Now here are the upper teeth after we line it up. These two undersized laterals have going to be a little bit of space in there because these teeth fit together properly. That's what we want. And this fits good, this fits good, and these fit good, and these teeth aren't quite big enough to fill that. So you really have to put some composite to fill those up or they may crown that tooth and make a wider crown for it to get it to work properly for this gentleman. Uh, all right, now that's the lure, and here's the taste. You see we got a piece of tubing on here that's keeping this case space right here just like it is when we get through if they can go. Now these are tori or uh, it's a benign tumor growth in there and the tissue is real thin over. It's good to take them off, but you don't have to. I mean, they can hold those all their life. They get so big, they uh, move the tongue out of where it position is, and 
and kind of foul up the teeth, and you can go in and take those uh, tori off. Uh, so I want to let them uh, show them there. Now here is the gentleman, and he's an air traffic controller, and he's uh, just always smiling and everything. He's just a nice guy, just really is. And when he came in, his teeth were, well, he had a deep bite. I mean, there's no two ways about it. It was a deep bite. You see, these are the front teeth. That's where they close. And the lower anterior, well, this is a, a cuspid down on the bottom. This, this doesn't look so bad here, but these other teeth went up and chewed in the roof of this guy's mouth. I mean, they stuck up in here like this, you know. And uh, he, would, he would chew like that, and he would touch the, the gum tissue up above behind the teeth here. Now, <clears throat> that keeps you from bringing your jaw forward. So a lot of people that have that deep, deep bite like that will have some trouble back here, but then there are a lot of people that don't. It's just that their jaw is, is not too far back, or it's not putting extra pressure on this retrodictional tissue in here. So we're going to go in and orthodontically intrude these teeth. That means I'm going to move these up like this. I mean, they're going to go up. The bone structure that hold the teeth goes up with the teeth. Now, if you want to intrude one tooth and leave this one and this one where they are, and you've got a tooth that's sticking down further in here, you can do that. And then the roots of this one will push up in the bone structure. So since the bone structure is leveled out in here, it'll eventually line up and get just about the same level as any of the rest of it uh, in the mouth. But now we're going to open this guy's bite for him. And by the way, you can open anybody's bite. So don't let somebody tell you that you're 30 years old or you're 50, you're 60, 80, uh, that you can't open your bite. You can open the bite on anybody that's living. And I honestly believe that if they have any bone structure in there, I will be uh, way over 90, uh, not way over, but if this next birthday will be 94, and my teeth are sticking down too far here, really, I mean, I'm not all that much, but I just have worn out, I have eaten, and ground off my teeth by chewing tobacco or biting or eating food that was full of sand and so speak on it and cutting down the size of that area. So let's get back here to leveling this bite, yeah. And you look at the uh, on this side the cuspids look like they're in a class two relationship. You need you need to move your bottom teeth forward any way you can't move it because those lower teeth are way up and up in here. I don't have a back shot in there but that's what happens in there. And here it is on this side too. Now the upper teeth are, look like a class two division two almost but uh, if those type your incisal edges would be back here and your edges of these seem to be out here somewhere and you have a quarter inch somewhere and you have to bring this forward. But we're going to be in front of the, see we have the bracket out here and they go up, they'll move back or they open up and then you tie your arch wire back. You don't let the arch wire expand anymore and they'll go to a level position without that. So let's get on here, there, here's the lower anterior. All right, this is the uh, lower anterior teeth, and they're crowded. Now, <coughs> if I could look at those, I should have taken the models and take the picture, and you look at them from back here, these are biting up underneath the gum tissue. 
from back on that side. I don't know whether you can see that or not when I get it out here. And so this is we're going to bring all these teeth down. Now the ones that go down the most are these right in here. Here's your cuspids. They're out of position. These are the four anteriors. They're all going down. These will go down a little bit. These will go down maybe just a hair. And the rest of this is going to stay pretty well stable. This is right after the guy had the extraction. Right on that side of the mouth right there. Okay, let's check. Uh, here he is. And he's smiling there. Now we rig all this up. <coughs> and if, if you uh, haven't done this, we put a, a small wire in there and get these teeth lined up pretty good. A so flexible wire, you can see it there. And then you come in with a heavier, preferably a rectangular wire right here. In other words, it's shaped something like that. And maybe we're going to go pushing this up and we don't want the teeth to flare forward so we put a little reverse torque in that thing as it goes up so rather than uh, if you just pull it up and the front tooth is setting somewhere like like uh, like this and you out in front of it and it's sitting in at that angle and you're pulling it up it's going to flare it out further than that. And so we don't want it to flare any. So we come in and put, take the wire that's going to go fit in those brackets right there. And you're going to have to bend that wire so that it's trying to do this to the tooth. In other words, it's trying to bring the roots forward. And so this wire would have to be angled in there something like that you bend it down engage it in there and that's that's wrong you have to this would have to be going like this we bend it down push it into the slot and the wire itself will be trying to do that to the tooth and then the tooth will tend to straighten out or tend to raise it straight up and down and that's what we did we put reverse torque in the tooth to make the tooth tip more in a forward direction like that. And we do the same thing down on the bottom. You see these teeth are coming along here. We've got over a quarter of an inch opening in here. And so these teeth are way up further than they be, will be. Now as I go up with these, they will do this. And I go up down with these, they will do this. And the, so the crowded lower anterior teeth will have plenty of room. Don't worry about that. And this will move out of the way. And the roots of the teeth will go back some. And the crowns will go forward some. And that way you get plenty of room for the teeth to come in. I'm going to erase that. And we'll go on the side. And you can see... When I'm biting on these teeth here, this has to be way up in there as far as you go close to right in this area. And these teeth are going to end up in an angle like that rather than going down like this all the way around. Now let's go looking from the other side again. And now we put a bite plate in his mouth to start but he had to speak to these airplanes and he could not speak clearly with that appliance in the mouth. This was removable so he could take it out and chew better. And he was uh, very discouraged. He, he thought, well, I'll do, I, there's nothing we can do. He'll just quit and put up with it like it was. And I said, yes, there is something we can do. We're going to bond something onto your upper front teeth. And these are the upper front teeth. You're looking up at the palate, you see, right in here. So we come in and bond some acrylic on here that and bites 
the teeth in it so it leaves the uh, the back teeth apart. They're not chewing during this period of time. Now, there the lower teeth are, how crowded they are. As they go down, they're going to move out in this area right here, and there'll be plenty of room for these teeth. When they get where we want, we tie it back. I put something in here to hold this space open for a, a bridge or an implant uh, that they might put in there. Now, there is this thing with this intruding wire. is a big wire. The other one is a flexible, little flexible wire on that. And the big wire is the one that pushing these teeth down and it tends to raise this one up the six year motor, but when it does, they chew on this part of that motor tooth and that keeps it from moving more. And if you don't want to open the bite at all, you can put a block of acrylic on these bottom teeth down here and you can put so much pressure on them that they'll intrude the whole thing and won't open the bite one bit. And we can take somebody and keep the I shall have exactly or we should increase it as we go through this if we want to. So there. Now, here we've uh, got things going our way. It's down just a little bit. And you can see these teeth are closer together. Uh, I'm sorry, this film right here is upside down. And uh, this is the up, upper teeth here. They're biting over the top of the lower teeth right there. I should have changed that. There it is, like it is, uh, should be. And now the, these will get closer, and these will continue to go up. And we've taken rather well, little flexible wire out and put a heavier uh, wire, and this is kind of overlapping. You see there are two arch wires in there. The one wire is way up here, and it's pulled down, it's pulling up on the teeth. One's down here, the other wire is smaller and just lines all the teeth up and does some other things as you uh, go through that. Now let's look, let's see, I better erase. There's nothing there. Right, there's the way the piggyback wire is on there. And that's carrying these teeth down as they go down, these teeth will have plenty of room to line up. And that's on the lower arch, the upper arch. You have to hold it back when you get the amount of space you want. You tie the small wire back. And you won't let the arch get any bigger. And then be sure you got something to hold this gap open because you want to hold it the size that it is to be able to put a tooth back in there. So we're at this point, and this is going down now. Look, these teeth are not being buried in the bone. The bone structure, all this alveolar bone structure up here, is raising up with the teeth. This is going down with the teeth here. The teeth are not being forced into the bone. Unless you have one tooth, and you could level it if it sticks up above, and you push it down like that, and the bone structure on it will go along with it, kind of line up with the bone structure on the other teeth beside it. But we're not doing that. Now here, this uh, this is just about to straighten out here. Now we're still got those two deals. Now the guy could not talk with this whole deal I had in there where he was biting on this, he could take it out. We bonded this on there, and when he bites down now, the lower teeth come right in here, and he couldn't get these teeth together good, but he could talk with this. And he's an air traffic controller, and when he tells a plane it's got this place to go and what it needs to do, the guy has to understand him. And so we had to change our a tactic of doing this to where this air traffic controller could talk to his people that he worked with. It was absolutely 
the city that they did then. And so we fixed up the, so that we could still do the orthodontics and uh, the guy could still talk. Now these will need to get a little better alignment in there. And then here is the intruding arch right there. There's the small wire that put it in, in place. Excuse me. Uh -oh. I have to do something here. There we go. All right. Now here we're virtually finished. And we've got the bite open to where these are right in here and these are over the top of the teeth. And they had a little class two problem, so we got a, a elastic put it over on this side. This side looked pretty good, so we didn't wear anything over there. The midline is good, really. It's just pull this cuspid back where it's closed there. So we got to move it back a little bit on that side uh, and round it up closer and still keep a midline or just try to get it as close as we can. Now he is collecting tartar or calcium on the side of his teeth. He can't uh, keep that off, apparently. This is not in focus, but the teeth are tied together and they're just about to the right spot. We won't and we lace these teeth in here and just pull these together real tight uh, so that we'll get them up there and the bone structure will get in place and then we'll put them in retainer. This is not in uh, focus there, so i just skip over that. Now we have taken everything off and we're coming in and going to put a retainer in. We got the midline on, we got the, the class one fixed over here and same thing here. This tooth is a little small and this one is a lot small. That tooth ought to be built out and we we'll need to crown it or put composite filling and fill that gap in like that. And now this man, and you leave it alone a little bit and this will deepen some and you want just a little bit of, of depth of bite so you, your uh, actual uh, amount that you move forward to put your teeth together is the over jet and over bite have to be just a little bit over this way and down that way. Now you reach in there and bite and you not have anything touch on the side and just except what you're closing to again. Now this guy was in his 40s I believe but I didn't care he could be 60 or he could be 70 or 80 and if you wanted to just bite open we could open it and you can too. I mean, it's, people are the same. You can open anybody's bite. If they're, I can open mine now at 94, it's already open, so I don't need to, but I could uh, intrude those teeth and open my bite at that, that amount of age. And this is closed like that. This space is a little bit. This tooth is so small. I want to keep this correct. Uh, back here is much more important than filling this. And then we'll keep this tooth. The midline is down through the back. And this guy looks good and he can talk good. And his teeth are just really quite good. And if he wears this retainer and stays with me like that, he will die in the grave when he's 90 years old or whenever. And he'll still have this position of these teeth. But I mean, if he holds them there. All right, let me see. Here on this side, this tooth is a lot too small. So you're going to have to composite and bring it out right here or slide it over here and add a little on both sides or crown the tooth, whichever one you need to do in there to fix that up. All right, there are the upper teeth. You can see this small tooth. Got a little bit of space here, but not much. This space around the molars we have, when we tighten the retainer, we close that up. You'll have some of that. 
and then you'll close that with a retainer in the mouth. Now let's see. All right, here's the bottom. We put a flexible wire in here and bond it to every tube. But we want this to stay like it is. And, uh, and we're going to hold this open. I'm going to put a retainer in there with a acrylic block in here. And as long as he wears this thing, he can come back and have an implant. Well, there is an implant in there. And he's already got, somebody's got the implant in the area. And we'll hold it open there while they finish it. I don't have a picture of the implant. Here's the lower retainer though, and this is what we're holding the space open. This upper retainer comes in like that. Now he doesn't speak clear, especially with this upper. You can slip that out and do your business and talk on the radio and the guy can hear you plain. And then if he slips that back in or just wears it part of the day but all night and went around the house and other places and here he's got to do something but usually a lower one won't affect the speaking at all. So I'll go and there's the upper retainer and here's where his lower teeth bite together right in there and that holds that at that uh, level and everything. And there's the lower retainer in the mouth and you can see the bar here that kind of holds the outside where it is. This is the bar here and this is the inside part of that lower retainer that comes up like that. And that, I don't guarantee you wear that. And now we've got to close these spaces back in here by squeezing up the retainer wire. And that kind of ends our uh, show. I think you uh, know about our. Uh, uh, in other words, I want you to join our group and subscribe to our channel. We have a close to 5,000 uh, subscribers, and I would like to have you. I do not have any idea where uh, this is going to or who I'm talking to, but I am just interested in you doing good, bang up, good orthodontics, and that's my objective in doing this. And so I will continue to try as long as I can to let people know what really good orthodontics should be. So I'm going to hang up.